in the modern era, horses are some of the most successful and common large animals on earth. Both domestic horses and domestic donkeys can be found on every single continent on this planet with the exception of Antarctica. The domestic horse, Equus calibus, comprises of up to 400 different breeds. And domestic day donkeys comprise of 186 different breeds. Throughout this new series I've created, focusing on Perissodactyl evolution, we will be looking at every single family within this order, including every single living horse, tapir, and rhino. Today, the in the family Equidae and in the tribe Equini, was the Hagaman there is only horse. one living Equus genus, Implicidens. genus Equus. The Hagaman horse, or the American zebra, lived from the very late Miocene or the very early Pliocene to the early Pleistocene epoch being found in the U.S. states of Idaho, Arizona, California, Texas, Nebraska, and Kansas. Although at first glance closely resembling a modern-day equine, and indeed a 2019 phylogenetic analysis found it to be pretty closely related to them, it was not a true ancestor of any living species, with this particular species being grouped just outside the clade containing all modern living equids. It's also possible that there is a long ghost lineage leading up to Equus simplicidens, as around the same time there was another species, Equus livernovensis, found throughout Western Europe and Russia. It's unlikely that we've discovered the last common ancestor of all living equids, with their last common ancestor believed to have lived around 5.6 million years ago in the late Miocene. It is believed that this first member of Equus lived in North America, as this is where there was a higher concentration of horses earlier on, before eventually it migrated into the Old World via the Bering Strait. This genus saw major diversification in the Old World, with one species, which is disputed, Equus giganteus, potentially weighing up to 1.5 tonnes, standing 2.25 metres tall at the shoulder, although these sizes are based off a single tooth. Equus lambe, or the Yukon horse, was possibly a close relative of the modern-day domestic and wild horses, living in Yukon until as recently as 10,000 years ago. It is also in North America where we find the last non-Equus equines, in the form of the genus Harrington hippus. Harrington hippus ranged from 167 to 278.4 kilograms, or 368 to 614 pounds, with this animal being pretty similar to modern-day horses in its diet, likely being a grazer. Once Equus left North America, it quickly diversified into the first living subgenus, a sinus, containing modern-day wild asses. The most basal form of this subgenus is Equus africanus, also known as the African wild ass. The only known subspecies of Equus africanus confirmed to still be alive is Equus africanus somaliensis, or the Somalian wild ass, which is critically endangered. One possible or even likely extinct subspecies is the Nubian wild ass, Equus africanus africanus which may still survive in some isolated regions in the Caribbean, although DNA analyses have yet to confirm this. The modern-day domestic donkey is believed to be a subspecies of the African wild ass, possibly a descendant of the Nubian wild ass. Equus kiang, or the Tibetan wild ass, or simply the kiang, is another species more common found throughout the Tibetan plateau. Finally, there is a species known as the onager, Equus hemoniensis, also known as the Asiatic wild ass. The historic range of this animal used to be widespread, including the countries of Palestine, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Jordan, Syria, Afghanistan, and Russia. Next is the subgenus Hippotigris, including all modern-day zebras. Equus capiensis, or the giant cape zebra, was first not a giant, weighing about 400 kilograms, comparable to some modern-day zebras. A 2009 DNA analysis identified all specimens of this species to be clustered within the species Equus quagga, or the plain zebra, so its validity as a new species is unlikely at best. There are three living species in the subgenus Hippotigris, or Hippotigris. 
including the grey Vs, plains and mountain zebras or zebras. The mountain zebra, Equus zebra, lives on mountainous slopes, open grasslands, woodlands and areas with sufficient vegetation, though their preferred habitat is mountainous terrain, which is where they get their name from. Mountain zebras do not aggregate in large herds like plain zebras, but rather they form small family groups consisting of a single stallion and one to five mares, also including their recent offspring. Equus quagga, or the plain zebra, is much more common than the mountain zebra, living on much more open savannas. The over half a dozen subspecies of this species live across southeastern Africa especially in sub-Saharan Africa. Equus quagga quagga is one such subspecies. The subspecies was unique due to its unique stripe patterns, with the rear end of the quagga not having any stripes at all, but rather being covered in a more brownish coloration. Equus gravi, or the gravies and imperial zebra, is categorised as endangered by the IUCN being found over a very small range in Ethiopia and Kenya. Only a decade ago, less than 2,000 mature individuals were believed to still be surviving in the wild, with 600 in captivity, meaning there is a pretty real chance we could lose this species overall. Though certainly iconic, both zebras and wild asses are nowhere near as iconic as the final group of animals I'm about to discuss. Horses, which are a part of the subgenus Equus, should definitely be on your top 10 list of farm animals, given how important they are for several jobs. The taxonomy of modern day horses, however, is complicated to say the least. It is unknown if domestic horses are a part of Equus ferris or the wild horse species, or if they're a distinct species Equus calibus, though the general consensus seems to be that they are subspecies. Equus ferris calibus. Another equid with a similar taxonomic uncertainty to it is Pazwalski's wild horse, or the Mongolian wild horse. However, it does appear that the Pazwalski's wild horse is Equus ferris Pazwalski, not Equus Pazwalski, so it is a subspecies seemingly. The subspecies likely diverged from the main species, Equus ferris, around 72 to 38,000 years ago, so it would have seen the likes of woolly mammoths and woolly rhinos. Finally, there is the extinct tarpan, Equus ferris ferris. By all genetic analysis, this subspecies is believed to have originated in the early Pleistocene and survived up until 1909 when the last individual died in captivity. In recent centuries, equids have been in real trouble. The Atlas wild ass, the Syrian wild ass, possibly the Nubian wild ass, and the European wild ass have also all gone extinct. Not to mention the Grey V zebra, the African wild ass, and Pazwalski's horse are also all endangered or critically endangered. If we don't stop the decline of these animals right now, stopping poaching and habitat loss, then these unique species and subspecies will all go completely extinct.